welcome back once more. You continue to still watch this, which is uh, fantastic. Um, this is EOC review number five, part three, key features of graphs for the North Carolina Math 3 EOC. Here are the standards if you need them. Key features of graphs, we're talking about end behavior, points of discontinuity, asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, intervals, increasing, decreasing, positive, negative, and how exponential versus logarithmic versus quadratic versus linear versus cubic, how they all increase over time. There's a lot to take in, but as always, we will utilize Desmos to help us uh, interpret some of these as much as we can. Here we go. Question number one, which point has a uh, which function has a point of discontinuity at x equals three when graphed? So you got to know the word discontinuity and a point of discontinuity is the same as a restriction. All right, what are we not allowed to plug in? So if I look at um, numbers here, I can plug in numbers less than three or greater than or equal to three. There's no number I can't plug in here, okay? So it's not gonna be that one. Now over here, I can't divide by zero. So what makes x squared equal to zero? Well, the square root of zero is zero. So x cannot equal zero. That's a point of discontinuity. Over here, I can plug in any number into an absolute value function. We'll be good on that. And I have a factored form of this denominator, x plus 3 and x minus 3. So x cannot equal negative 3, nor can x equal 3. Both of those numbers are points of discontinuity. Now, it says which function has a point of discontinuity at x equals 3. Well, because x equals 3 happens to be this restriction, then the answer is going to be D. So C has a point of discontinuity, but it's not three. Because you can plug in three to the top and get zero. And you can you can divide zero by, um, if I plug in three, that's going to be nine. Zero divided by nine is still zero. That's a, that's a legit point. But when I go over here and I plug in, um, excuse me, positive three. So three plus two over three squared minus nine. That's going to give me five divided by nine minus nine. That's no good. Can't divide by zero. So can't divide by zero. D is your answer. OK, question two. All right, question two says, which function does not have a set of all real numbers as its domain? It's kind of similar to the last question here. It's just worded differently. As far as uh, does not have a set of all real numbers, uh, we're going to imply that we have to make sure that what uh, there's one function in here that, you, that you're that you stuck with not being able to plug a number in. And because we just talked about it, you probably can figure it out. Um, it's You can't divide by zero. So what number is going to have a... a or what function is going to have a, a part where you can, where you produce a number that you can't divide by it. Um, so since you can't divide by zero, well, this has a fraction in it. So if I set X plus three equal to zero and I subtract three from both sides, you get negative three, correct? So that means X cannot equal negative three. That means my domain is all real numbers except for negative three. That means B is my answer. And the other functions, I can plug in anything I want. Uh, I can show you on a graph how that looks too. I threw all these functions into Desmos. Um, if you're doing cosine, make sure that you click on the wrench and go to radians so you can see. I'm going to just hide one at a time. Now you, We know the answer is B, so I'm going to show you why the other ones. That's going to go all the way to the left. That's going to keep going right and up. So that one's got all real numbers. These absolute values will always go left and right. They won't stop. And then the cosines, they'll continue to go left and right, just like sines would. So the only number that kind of acts weird is this one. And if you look over here, it skips over negative 3. That's because that's a, a vertical asymptote. Uh, so a vertical asymptote 
is another word for a uh, point of discontinuity where you can't remove it. And um, that's going to be uh, B, all real numbers except negative 3. All right, next question. For this question and the question afterward, we're going to be dealing with n behavior. It is in your best interest to graph the function to see how it opens up on the left and right side. So I would put that in Desmos before we begin. All right, here is the graph of x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 1. You can see that on the left side, it opens downward, and on the right side, it opens upward. I'm going to sketch this graph out so I can explain how to interpret these n behaviors at the bottom. Um, so on the left side, it opens down. On the right side, it opens up. That means I, I think about it as left and down, and right and up. Now, on the x-axis, left is negative infinity, and right is positive infinity. On the y-axis, down is negative infinity, and up is positive infinity. So when I say left and down, I mean x goes to negative infinity, and y goes to negative infinity. So when it says, what's what represents the right? Well, I'll start, I'll start with the left behavior because my brain always goes left and right. Um, the left end behavior is going to be x has, having to go to negative infinity. So it's one of these two. But since it's opening down, the y is also going to negative infinity. So the y is f of x in this case. And that's going to be a. So we say as x goes to negative infinity, y or f of x goes to negative infinity. Um, you can do the same thing. I mean, you can probably figure out the, the right end behavior based off of we've already covered our left here. But on the right side, it's going to go right and up. So x is going to go to positive infinity on the right. And up is going to be y going to infinity. So that's going to be positive and positive. So that's going to be c. So the right end behavior, x going to infinity, f of x will go to infinity as well. So you have to know how to write those. It's not a hard concept, left, down, up, right, but the, the terminology, with, especially with the symbols with the um, infinities, can be tricky for people. Try the next one. All right, we have a new function. You're going to want to graph this as well, so graph it. And then notice that it asks for the left and right end behavior in a different order this time, so left, right. So remember, left is x is going to negative infinity always, and right is x is going to positive infinity. Those don't waver. It's, it's how it, it behaves on the up and down is what changes. So uh, you're going to want to graph that, and then you can check back with me after you pause the video. Um, so I have a parabola that opens downward, so it's going to be down and down. So um, if I draw that graph real quick, it's going to be left and down and right down. So we're going to start with x is going to negative infinity. But since it's going down, the y will also go to negative infinity as well. So I'll say f of x goes to negative infinity. So that's going to be negative, negative. Where is that? That's going to be a. So kind of like the last one difference here on the right side, it's also going down, but x is going to go to positive infinity as y goes to negative infinity. So because it's going to the right, we say as x goes to positive infinity, but since it's pointing downward, we want f of x to point to negative infinity once more. So positive negative is going to be this last one over here. That's going to be choice D. So that's how you interpret end behaviors. All right, you're likely to have a graph uh, drawn or a function that you'll have to graph and determine increasing, decreasing, positive, and negative. So let's determine, or let's do a little refresh on what all those mean. A, uh, a positive interval is all intervals above the x-axis, and these are all x values. So each interval is going to be x values. Um, positive is going to be above the x-axis. 
while the negative is going to be below. The increasing would go up as it goes to the right, and decreasing would go down as it goes to the right. Um, so your x-axis is your cutoff for your positive intervals, but let's look at the, the interval itself. So you can represent an interval two different ways. You can say from 0 to x is between 0 and 2, or you can just reference it as an interval 0 to 2. But what I want to do is I want to look at 0 and 2. I want to shade all the values on the graph between those x values. And that that interval right here is all above the x-axis. Part of it's going up, part of it's going down. So I can't say it's increasing or decreasing, but I can say it's all positive since it's above the x-axis. All right, the next interval, let me use a different color. Uh, x is less than negative 3. So if I go to negative 3, and I go all the x values less than negative 3, but I keep going, part of that graph is below the x-axis, part of it's above. So I can't say it's positive or negative, but I know the overall graph from negative infinity, because it keeps going, to negative 3, that graph is going downward. So that's going to be a decreasing. Um, if I go between, let me change colors, uh, negative 3 and positive 1. So if I go to negative 3, and where is 1? Right here. That graph is continuing to rise. Notice that part of it's below the x-axis and above, so I can't say negative or positive, but I can say it's increasing over that. Um, over that interval there. So from negative 3 to 1, you might look at it like this or this. You would say it's increasing. And then finally, the last one from 2 to 5, um, it's probably going to be a positive interval um, just based off of process of, of elimination. But from 2 to 5, it looks like that graph is going to be all below the x-axis. So that's going to be, um, excuse me, not positive, negative interval since it's below the x-axis. And then the last question is just seeing, can we come up with an interval that uh, that combines two? So if I look at between five and six, um, so here's five, let's see, four, let me erase that because I'm having a hard time reading that. All right, so five to six, Looks like that interval is going up, but also notice that it's all above the x-axis. So between 5 and 6, you actually have two types of intervals. That's going to be um, positive, and it's going to be increasing. And, um, you know, I'm going to challenge you. I mean, I don't have any more problems on here, you know, on this sheet, but certainly look through it. See if you can find any others that are a combination of um, intervals. All right, one more question on this video. All right, one more uh, graph here. Uh, we're reaching the finish line. Um, let's 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 knock it out. So consider the graphs, the four functions. Graph them in Desmos. I'm not going to read them for you, but you can go ahead and key them in while I'm reading the question. As x increases from 0 to positive infinity, rank the rate of increase of the functions from fastest to slowest in the blank next to each function. So fastest being the number 1, 4 being the slowest. So um, pause the video and key those in. All right, I have them all graphed in here. I, I, didn't, I left the y equals out. And first thing you notice is that linear one jumps out of the gate. Linear is always kind of, they, they like to start fast, but... Linears are actually the slowest of them all when it when it ends up being um, the final result. So if you look at the the graphs here, um, the one that I want to find out the fastest is going to be whichever one shoots up quickest eventually first. And if it looks if you look at this purple, my purple here is the one with the third power, and the black is the one with the x in the exponent. Eventually, that's going to be overtaken. And they cross each other. And then over here, you're going to notice, and zoom in a little bit, now the black is increasing faster. 
And that's actually gonna, that's gonna be the case for, for there on out. So the fastest one's always gonna be the exponential. So we're gonna note that on here. The exponential is gonna be the quickest one. So we'll put uh, fastest here, but but you would be correct in assuming the third power is the second fastest. So that's that's right at its tail, but it's never gonna quite catch it and they're gonna get further and further apart, okay? So the third power would be the next fastest increasing. So we'll go ahead and write a two there. And then if you zoom out a little bit, pan that out, um, we can kind of see how the linear and the quadratic compare. Well, you can probably figure out which one's gonna be slowest overall, but um, here's the, the, the green being the linear, the quadratic is the red. That's never gonna catch these, uh, but the linear is definitely gonna be the slowest over time. Let me change my window so you can um, you can kind of see how that all compares with a little bit more user friendly. So the third fastest is the quadratic followed by the slowest here. Linears will always be slow. Um, exponentials will always be um, the quickest to rise over the course of time. And then it just depends on the exponent. So the higher the exponent, the, the quicker it's going to rise. Um, let's see if I can make this um, be a little bit more... Um, user friendly. Let me pause the video and adjust my graph. Y'all, I changed the scale on my graph. Um, I, I, I made the, uh, the y-axis be much more higher so you can see that rate of increase. Um, and you can see over time that, let me zoom out a little bit, that that linear function is going to be the slowest, followed by the quadratic, followed by the cubic, followed by the exponential at the end. So that, that'll always level out at the end. Um, and so, yeah, that concludes the key features of graphs video. There's one more video in this review, and I have completed them all, God willing. Um, so stick around for one more. It's going to be the statistics video, um, and that'll cover, hopefully, every single topic that I can imagine um, could be covered on the Math 3 EOC. Thanks for watching. Y'all are awesome.